from Just Imagine Journals. Today I have two Tim Holtz mini books for you. Very simple construction. I'm going to show you both of them first very briefly and then I'll explain how I constructed it and what I used in case you'd like to make one yourself. So they're, um, as you see, lots of layers, fabric stamping, fabric stamping here as well and I usually stamp on both sides because then it's good for the little ribbon tabs and then if it comes through that doesn't matter with a, a this sort of style a little tag there hiding and that was gifted to me I think from um, Suzanne or Kim they've both been very generous and some more um, texture from an embossing folder a 3d embossing folder another tag tag that comes out a little pocket here and again the textures and here's uh, some more layering in this case I um, added a little frame and I wanted to give some dimensions I have the little uh, person inside the frame and then with his elbow out and there's also some layering here with some embossing folder there fabric stamping and here's these wonderful uh, Tim Holtz numbers but what I don't like about them is they're super shiny so I took some sandpaper to it and I like the grunge effect a lot better and then here we have another tag and the back of the book and as you can see on the first page and the last page the tag actually extends and is part of the book so you can stand it up there's only five pages so probably be a good idea to put one in the center as well so that's one and the second one is very similar just a variation on the theme so this beautiful tag was gifted to me by Cindy and she uses the photo strips and then she cuts one off and puts a little bit of sewing and a little bit of ribbon and it's just so effective it really lifts it. So treasured moments with an eyelet and again that longer tag on the front. Again the tab binding and here the I've used the canvas tape this time instead of the stamped fabric. Moments you can't put into words and these uh, tags that I've made are all stenciled again with the distress inks it's a little secret spot to make a note another um, flip over and some lovely little postcards and the photo strip I do you like those photo strips they're very versatile I like this little guy and the little paper ruffle at the back. Do more of what makes you happy. And here, this little uh, guy with his dog, I didn't want too much room for it to move around, so I've used an eyelet there to close off a bit of that space so he just comes in and out very nicely. Oops, on the edge. Think happy thoughts and this good days. This is a gift for a friend and we call her the enabling queen because she's always telling us about new craft supplies and an enabling queen needs a crown. So <laughs> there she is. Put that back in. And the same idea, it can stand up as well treasured moments and you see that tag has some texture paste as well with a, a stencil so those two are very simple but lots of fun to make and what I used you could use any paper of course but I like the Tim Holtz pages because they're nice and sturdy so I have started with an 8 by 8 sheet Simply cut it in half and then folded it on whatever side of the paper that you prefer. You can also cut it the other way, this way. Doesn't really matter. 
it just depends where you want the openings. So assuming we have those long tags, I'm just going to show the page construction that I used. So I actually made each one like a little canvas and did each page, closed it up and had a pocket and then ended up with lots of them and decided which order to put them together. Another way to do it, which I think is possibly what I would do next time, is to leave the, these open, use my cotton strip, stamp cotton strip, and paste it down. So this is still open. And then that gives me the opportunity to decide, do I want the pocket in the side? Do I want it in the top? And then the next one. And you just leave a little space as you normally would between the pages. Add your cotton strip and then continue on. Uh, if you decide that you didn't want the pocket where, it, where you have it, then that's easily solved as well because you can either glue that down or uh, let me see if I can find an example. Here with this one, for example, you see I've just torn some paper and then I've stuck that over both sides because, as you know, when you paste it down, you lose a bit of space. So if you want it nice and roomy, that's another way of doing it. Or you could even sew a strip. So that's the basic construction. And I wanted, this is the fabric that I use. I just stamp up a lot of it. And uh, you normally I do it on both sides, as I say, and then I just tear off strips as I need them. And then sometimes you might decide that you just, that paper's too busy or you've repeated that pattern twice. And then you might decide that you'd like to cover it over. I'm just seeing if I can find an example. So here, then I would just use a single piece and then cut it down. In this case, I've cut a square in the middle, like a little frame. And uh, I think there was one here where I did the same thing. Let me see if I can find it. So here we have a, a circle where I've cut it. So any sort of frame she could make. So really a very simple construction. The secret, I think, is in the layering and the different textures. I've used um, the... 3D folders and I've just started with food packaging and as you can see it uh, food packaging and as you can see that it's very effective by the time you add some distress uh, colors or, or distress oxides so there are my two uh, Tim Holtz mini books both for friends um, gifting them as thank you gifts so thank you Suzanne and Kelly and I hope you enjoy them. Thanks very much and if you enjoyed this please give it a like and I hope to see you next time. Bye for now.